What's up everybody? Today we are back with part three of how to increase your bench press, how to bench press more weight. Now, week one, we talked about uh, increasing your form, how to break down the technique and how to you know, perfect that portion of the lift. Week two, we talked about training your force posture curve by doing partial range movements. So doing the floor press, a bench press from pins, and a board press. Now in part three, we are going to talk about accommodating resistance. Now accommodating resistance is super cool and I'm pretty sure you all have seen it somewhere, at least on Instagram for sure. Accommodating resistance is simply uh, a method where you add chains or bands or something of that nature to change the weight throughout the range of motion of the lift. How can someone change the weight that they're lifting throughout the lift? It's easy. You just add, like I said, bands or chains to the bar. Let's get back on topic. And here's a video of how to use bands on the bench press. So this is how you set up bands for your bench press. Now, you will have some kind of variation of this. This is a power rack. You might have you know, a bench press only rack. So I'll show you a couple different ways of how to set this up. Chances are you probably won't have band pegs at your gym. Band pegs or band pegs on a rack look something like this. So the band on the band peg will usually go, you know, there's a peg right there. You put this on there and you loop it all the way up onto the bar. It's very important before I show you all these other ones for you to understand that you have to line up the band at the bottom with where your bar path is going to be. So you don't set up the band back over here and have it straight up to the bar while it's hooked onto the rack. That will make you bench press like this and it'll pull that bar towards your face. Now if you don't have band pegs at your gym and all you have is something like this, just a power rack, then what you'll do is you might want a longer band like these. And these bands are from Elite FTS. I highly recommend them. They're extremely durable. They're what I've used and what I have at the gym. Um, and they, they last a long time. If you'd like to check out those bands, I will put a link down in the description for you to check them out. Go ahead and buy you a pair so that way you can use them at home or at your gym. When you set up the band on this rack, you'll probably want to do something like this. You'll slide that band underneath, take it like that, and you'll pull it up and on to that bar like that. When you set this up, you'll notice how I set that bar right there on my shoulder. You're going to want to be sure that if the band is super heavy, push up on this side so that way that side doesn't come up. Because what you don't want to do is put this on there and this flip that other end up. That can be dangerous, you don't want that to happen, and you don't want people to see you do that in the gym. Now, if you're lifting at something like a Gold's Gym or a LA Fitness or one of those, you might just have a commercial bench press rack and not a full-on power rack that you can bench out of. What I'm talking about is something like this. What you'll do if you're in that situation is you'll have the band around one side like this, and you might want to put, you know, if you're starting off with a 25 or a 45, Go ahead and put that plate on there and then put the band on it. That might be a little more safe. But what you'll do is you'll take this band, put it on the collar right here. You'll loop it through, go down below, underneath the bench. You'll pass it that way. And then you'll loop it onto that side of the collar. Now, this might be a little awkward setup, but hey, if you want to train with accommodating resistance and this is the only equipment that you have, then that's another method or way of putting it together. Now, one thing that's important for you to understand is what weight you're using when using bands. So if you want more information about that, I did a video, man, it's been about two years ago now, about how to measure band tension. And this works for, you know, whether you're using those little bands or the longer bands, uh, you just need a fish scale or a luggage scale. But if you want more information about that, I'll put another link in the description. And if you guys are actually interested in more of the you know, science behind training and things like that, I highly suggest that you guys check out Science and Practice of Strength Training 
by Vladimir Zatsyorsky. This is a great read and you'll actually learn more about the force posture curve and the benefits of training with bands, chains, uh, shortened range of motion, things like that. So not only will you strengthen your lifts, you'll strengthen that noggin. Now that is how to bench press with bands. So now I'm gonna show you how to bench press with chains. Not a lot of gyms will have these available for you. However, you can purchase them from EliteFTS.com or Rogue or a lot of fitness websites have these chains available for you. This is how I prefer for you to set up your chains. Now, these easy straps can be also purchased at EliteFTS.com. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and put a link in for those as well. So in my description, you'll see a link for bands, the different kinds of bands, so like the really smaller ones or the large ones and then you'll see the chains, and then you'll also see the easy straps. So when you set up your chains, you want to put them right about here, or maybe even lower if your arms are going to be longer. So the idea behind this is that you want a couple of links on the floor whenever you extend the arm and unrack to bench press. This will help ensure that you're not just training stability and actually training with accommodating resistance. So now that we've gotten through how to set these up, now I'm going to tell you why you should do or train with bands and chains. See, bands and chains help to strengthen your force posture curve. Both of them allow you to decrease load as you're coming down the eccentric portion of the lift and increase load as you're coming up. So like I discussed previously on the training with different ranges of motion, you want to strengthen and you want this portion of the lift to be exceptionally stronger than this part of the lift. This will help ensure that whenever you start to struggle, you're able to and are strong enough to lock out that lift and complete a new PR. You'll notice that you'll be able to kind of fight that a little bit longer. It's still gonna be a slow lift, but your body knows and is adapted to accelerating through the lift and not decelerating. And that is it for part three. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know down in the comments if you've ever trained with bands or chains and if you've seen progress from them. I'm sure you have, but I'd like to hear from you guys anyway. Now be sure to like, subscribe, and share with all of your powerlifting buddies so that way they learn how to train with accommodating resistance. Until next time, stay strong.